You are now listening to the Molten Fantasy Sports Podcast. On today's show, we are going to be talking about the Red Cliff Dolphins. They're predicted 1-17, to including Tommy Gilbert, Ray Stone, Hammer, Asako, Katoa, Tavare, and more. I'm your host, the Super Coast Matrix, and I am here, as always, with my co-host, Braino. Braino, how are you, mate? I'm well, mate. I'm well. Mate, you're you're uh, obviously the guy that's living up in, in, uh, in Brizzy, so I feel like you're probably in, in a really good position to have a chat about these guys. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you reckon? Dolphins? Yeah, Crosstown Rivals. Um, I'm excited to hate them. Um, now that I don't hate the Cowboys, I need someone else to hate. It's hard to hate the Titans when they suck every year. So here we are. I'll um I'll hate the Dolphins when they suck every year. Um, but just to cut in, if you're watching us on YouTube, drop a comment. But more importantly, hit that like and subscribe button and turn those notifications on so you don't miss any of us in the future. Beautiful. Um, like let's it. run down the team list. All right, at fullback we have. Hamaso Tabua Fidel, the Hammer, 37% owned. On the wings, we have Edric Lee and Jermaine Asako. We have Tessie New and Ewan Aitken in the centers. We've got Anthony Milford and Sean O'Sullivan in the halves. We've got Mark Nichols and Jesse Bromwich lining up at the front. We've got Jeremy Marshall King, JMK, uh, at the nine. We've got Kenny Bromwich, Felice Kafusi, and Ray Stone in the lock and second row forwards. And predicted off the bench is Cody Nicarima, uh, Tommy Gilbert, Jared Wallace, Herman S.A.S.A. Um, and, yeah, they've got a few blokes like Brenko Lee, Isaiah Katoa, and Valence Tavare, uh, if we can have a chat about them. Uh, where do you have these guys finishing? Um, I don't have them last. I've got them second last. I feel like they're probably going to finish 16th. It could be pretty tough for them. I know I know that these guys have been chasing um, Munster for pretty much most of the preseason and the off-season. They were looking for that marquee signing, and I don't think they've found it, unfortunately. They've got a lot of guys that are just sitting mid-range. They're sitting as guys that will do a job, but no one that will win you a premiership. Um, which I'm sure that Wayne Bennett's pretty upset about. So I'm sure they're going to be looking for that person, but they don't have it this year, which I think they'll do it tough. How about yourself? Yeah. Uncle Uncle Wayne did all right with getting a lot of quality mid-tier talent. If they hit it out of the park with a monster or a tremendous fullback or something like that, I could see them making some real steps forward. But, yeah, I haven't at 16th. I haven't at second last. Um They'll probably be better than the Dragons. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> That's three in a row. That's three in a row that we've... Uh, and like we said last podcast, we don't talk about where we have these teams coming before we hop on. So I love the fact that we're on the same page with that. Look, look, when it comes to talking about the gutter teams, we uh, we really come together there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a, there's a bit of difference between the ones we took in the top eight, but that's the beauty of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, let's see if there's anyone that we can uh, that we can hit it out of the park. Oh, let's go to our booms. Uh, much like the Dragons, I struggled a little bit, and when I do look for a home run in a team, I think I'll struggle for. Oh, I'd look for a fixture proof forward, and I currently don't have 18% Tom Gilbert, who I added almost straight away. But my pros and cons list reads as follows. My pros are he's a young origin forward who has a great 60-minute role last year in a great team with 0.8 PPM. I just can't see him being much better on this team. Like you run down, you know, 1 to 17 and just nothing really excites me. I hope I'm proven wrong, um, but I just don't see him being 10 points better than last year. And if I'm spending that sort of money... Um, I'm looking for a guy that I can play every week and that can take those steps forward. Um, yeah, I see him hovering maybe around that 50 points per game, but he's really priced it in and around that anyway. Yeah. Uh, what do you reckon, I mean, the way Any, any booms the way, for you? The way that I feel about the Dolphins in terms of booms... <laughs> it's It's tough. I don't see much going on. Unfortunately, like I said at the start, I don't really feel that great about this team. Um, Yeah, you mentioned Tom Gilbert. There's another couple of guys we'll talk about that could be smokies or could be good options in the cheapy range. But 
when you talk about booms, like I said, they haven't found that marquee player. They haven't found that guy that's really going to take them into the top eight. You know, it's very hard to see them top 12, 13, let alone uh, breaking into the top eight. We've got so many better teams in this squad, which kind of says a lot about the fact that we think the, dra- the Dragons are going to come last. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, nothing good to say here, but nothing good to say over there either. But, um, yeah, yeah and no, I, I agree. I think if... I think if you had like that marquee half and you could see one of these mid tier forwards, you could be having the same discussions that you're having with say a Niakure or a, uh, or a Ghana, but these guys are more expensive than that and are coming off worse playmakers. So that's where I sit with it. Yeah, that's right. You've got to look at where they came from versus where they are this year and, and whether they're going to improve or not. And I think anybody coming to the Dragons this year, unless they've got a really improved fixture, they've got an improved opportunity, uh, they've got way better minutes, that's the only way that you would look at someone. And and for the Dragons, you've got Tom Gilbert coming from the Cowboys who overperformed last year, if anything. Um, and he averaged, what was it, forty mid-40s, mid to late 40s, I think yeah, it was yeah. last year. He's... His break even is 47. I think it was priced at a 47 average. So, And he's got a 0.8 PPM, like you mentioned. So at the end of the day, he needs to play 60-plus minutes to be relevant in Supercoach this year, and he's not going to do that. He's just not. There. So, I mean, there's rumour. When you, when you were talking through your team list, there's a couple of things I think may have changed since we did these notes. But um, I think the one of them, we've got Ray Stone named at lock, but I think Tom Gilbert is actually favoured at lock. So could he play 60 minutes at lock? Is he an option at lock if he starts there? Probably still not um, if we're looking at that. And then obviously then Ray Stone shifts to the bench, which is a really good cheapy option we'll talk about soon. But then he becomes kind of irrelevant coming off the bench. So it kind of messes up a bit of the super coach dynamic. Imagine you're Wayne, you've got these marquee players and you roll out Ray Stone at 13. Yeah, it's not going to happen, is it? I don't mind Ray Stone as a player. Don't get me wrong. I feel like he's just got that grunt. He's got plenty of work in him. He just doesn't go down. He He'll continue to play until he's, you know, he's asked not to. Um, if he starts at 13, yeah, he's, he's no. genuinely someone I'm looking at. But in saying that, he's probably not going to. Um, and then Tom Gilbert needs 60 minutes to be relevant. Is he going to play 60 minutes at lock? I'd prob- <laughs> I don't actually think he does either. So, yeah, there, there's plenty of, um, I guess, risks there that you would take on a, on a Dolphins team. And I'm not prepared to take any risks in this lineup um, just due to the fact that they're a new team in the comp. You know Uncle Wayne loves to do some wacky shit. Um, you don't know what he's going to do in round one. Uh, so, yeah, it's an absolute pass for me for the majority. Yeah, yeah. And you were talking about Ray Stone. He was your Smokey. Stepping into mine, I really – and I had to look really hard to find anything I wanted in this team because I really just don't like the hammer pick. But if you're lo- using this hammer logic, and obviously a lot of people are, he's 37% owned. Uh, new guy, new team, new year, new me. Uh, Asako, 6% owned. Uh, he'll be the goal kicker. How many t- tries do we honestly think that the Dolphins are going to score? But he's 380K. I don't think he's going to lose that much. Uh, it's a bold move, uh, and I won't be starting the year with Asako. And we genuinely don't know how good or like, we can predict that this team's going to be trash can, but, like, that could be really good, and then I could see Asako kicking a lot of goals and scoring on the wing, and it might come back to bite me, but I would prefer Asako over Hammer or Tyrell Sloan, and, yeah, you know what I think about Asako as an ex-Bronco, so. <laughs> sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Sometimes maybe 50, accurate. sometimes maybe 5. Uh, and, and that's an, uh, that's a 25 average. Uh, so no, thank you. Um, that's a, that's a fat fade from me, but, uh, Hey, you go there. If you want to go there and you want to enjoy that, uh, 0.5 I'm PPM. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm going to look, he keeps getting signed. So there must be something I'm missing. Yeah. He's that, he's that, um, you know, partially attractive looking bird that you're looking at when you're in a night out, but you just, there's something about her, you know, that you're just not clicking with. Um, that's, that's absolutely Jermaine Asako, you know, you know, you shouldn't go there, but you do anyway, because you just have more and more beers. So more and more bowls. You know, it'd be fantastic if, if, if Tavare come in and Asako didn't even get named, I'd be, I'd be even happier. So yeah, let's, I mean, 
that's that's a huge shout. I mean, like when when we move on to my cheapies, I mean, Hammer's my bust. I, I don't know whether I need to expand on that too much. I, I think that actually I probably do, considering what's he own thirty seven percent. Yeah, thirty seven percent. This is the most insane pick I've seen this this whole season. <laughs> I'm going to go out and say that he is the worst highly owned player in the competition by an absolute country mile. The reason for that is because he's come across from the Cowboys, right? He was poor at fullback. He actually averaged less point, super coach points at fullback than he did in the centres and off the bench. So he averaged 51 points in the centres last year at the Cowboys in a very, very good team, a very well-structured team, a well-run team. He's come across to the Dolphins. Who says he's going to be any better at fullback when he averaged less points, 47 as opposed to 51, at probably what the th- what did they finish third last year the cowboys who says that hammer's yeah. going to be better than that that's absolutely ludicrous the people that are jumping on hammer have clearly just seen oh cheapy fullback new team who knows what he can do great let's just jump on but we need to think deeper than that we need to look at the structure of this team you've got anthony milford who they're going to be relying on to do a fair bit of work and sean o'sullivan who's been a backup half for the last four years behind Nathan Cleary, like, yes, great, this is Stuart McGill effect behind Shane Warne, but <laughs> I don't feel like there's that comparison in this in, when we're talking about Nathan Cleary versus Sean O'Sullivan. Um, so there's a lot of red flags here that I'm not going near with the hammer. Do you feel the yeah, same? And, I'm assuming you do. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, like, even running off Anthony Milford. Anthony Milford's got the Tom Thibodeau, Derek Rose effect. Like, uh, Wayne's just got his boy. Um, he's probably going to be best man in his wedding. And, yeah, he's just – there's not a lot of talent around. I don't see – Hammer's got no base. All these people that have – these 37% of people that have Hammer are just going to waste a trade getting him out. But all the people that don't have him, look, if – say there's a 10% chance he's a gun and he goes up to – 400, 500K. He's only a trade away. I would rather have to trade him in and eat humble pie than start with him. Yeah, you've got two rounds to have a look, right? Uh, but still, this is how I feel about the hammer. Get out of my house! <laughs> not a fan. Not a fan. Anyway, uh, I've mentioned Ray Stone already, but um, <coughs> Tavare and Isaiah Katoa seem to be the only two cheap, good cheap options aside from Ray Stone in this squad. We've already talked about Ray Stone. We talked about the fact that if he starts at lock, he's a look. You have a look at him. You see what that looks like. Um, if he starts at lock, he's a lock. Honestly, if he starts at lock, I'm playing him. We know he's a workhorse. Care. 40K. Yeah, he's a workhorse. We, he gets through work. He makes tackles. You know, we, we know what he can do. We've seen him at Parramatta. Unfortunately, he comes to the bench at Parramatta, so we didn't see a full, um, uh, I guess, a full game or a full few games in a row from him. Um, starting, but yeah, absolutely, completely agree. One point one ppm, price at a twenty three break even. Twenty three. He could do that in a half comfortably every game, in tackles, oh, tackles easy. alone. That is it. Um, so yeah, if he starts, he's a lock. You've got to get him in your team. But yeah, it's, Tavare it's, and Katoa. It's low risk. It is. <laughs> Tavare and Katoa. They're the only two t- cheap options, but I'm not touching either of them because it doesn't even look like they're the two that are going to be in this side to start. They're not going to be in the 1-17. to 17. I mean, who do you take out? Um, uh, at this point, uh, Bostock is probably more likely to come into this team considering uh, we didn't mention it at the start, but Edric Lee has just gone down with an injury. Um, yeah. So he's going to miss the first few weeks of the season, it looks like. It was just announced actually very recently. I think it was about an hour ago. Um so that's worth noting that Edric Lee is going to miss the start of the season, unfortunately, which is a really big shame for him because he had a great year last year. He goes down with an ankle injury. Um, so Jack Bostock seems to be the guy. He'll be playing in this trial on the weekend. So he's a very, very close look. And then you've got Asako on the other side. You've got Tessie New and Aitken who are going to sit in the Senate. So that's your only spot, really, that you're um, going to see any change this year. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't you rather be the guy that... When you mould your team, you've found a better player that's going to play, and then you're able to trade down to Tavare if there's an injury in round eight. Like, wouldn't that be a much better strategy? You've already maybe made a bit of money. You've already, you know, during bye weeks, been able to play this 300, 350K guy, and then a cheapie comes across like this. They didn't start week one. They didn't start week two. There's an injury. You bank 150K. 
and move down to this guy and ride the wave from then. And you just haven't wasted a spot for eight weeks or whenever yeah. the injury happens. Yeah, that's a good shout. They're great downgrade options, absolute fades to start the season. You can't start with them. It makes no sense. The problem is people are looking for this really bottom dollar cheapie like Tavare or Katoa. And they're, you know, but you need to look elsewhere. There needs to be another option there. I know that obviously Jack Howarth is not an option anymore considering he seems to be out of favour at the storm. Um, but there will be a bottom dollar cheapie. There will be a bottom dollar, there will be a bottom dollar cheapie at some point that comes up in the next week before we hit Teamless Tuesday. I guarantee you that someone will come into favour. So we need to keep an eye on them and just keep these guys in our back pocket. You never know what's going to happen there. But even Jack Bostock, if he comes into this team, I'm not looking at him because yeah, I yep. think he's what nearly 4% owned now because he had a good trial in week one. <laughs> Who says he's going to be any good on a team that is going to have very poor attack this year? You know, your halves are Sean O'Sullivan and Anthony Milford. I'm sorry, great players in their own right at other teams and good teams. Sean O'Sullivan obviously looked in place at Penrith. Milford, great player in his own right back in the day. But oh, together... Like in 2016, we're talking, like, that's seven years ago. Mate, I may as well go and call Benny Barber and get him back into the NRL if we're talking about Anthony Milford. Oh, why not? I'd actually take him at the Tigers, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll uh, leave that one for another day. But, yeah, no, it, you've got to, you've got to fade these guys. Tavare, what's he owned? 20%. Something insane. 20%. Yeah. 24% for Katoa, 20% for Tavare. That's guys, wild. Guys, get them out of your How team. is Katoa getting a run? Like, yeah. Get they're them not listening to our pod. They're not. And p- to be fair, they're probably not listening to any pods. Um <laughs> Because everybody's talking about the same thing. It just makes sense. There's there's no way in the world you can play these guys. But anyway, we're not going to harp on forever. Um, it's definitely a no for me, dog. It's a no. Give me, you, you just can't. Give, give, me your, give me your hot tag. What do you got? I don't have anything. I was going to play the crickets tag, but I don't even know whether I want to waste three seconds of uh, the media board. Um, because yep. there's fades all over the park, unfortunately. I, don't, I do not currently have any of these players in my team. Unless Ray Stone starts at lock in round one, I will not have any of these players in my team. It's as simple as that, um, unfortunately. Yep, yep. How about yourself? Oh, look, all I've got to say is if you are starting the year with Hammer, prepare to trade him out in round three. You may as well just start the season with less trades. And just look, also, also, I just want to add, that's a, yeah, good point. I'm, I'm with you. If Hammer, some miracle, starts incredibly well and has major base stats and just looks like a fucking beast. You add him in round three and you take the price rise and you're just sweet. One trade, no risk. You get a two-week look and that's the beauty of players like this is that we might come out and your mate, Jermaine Asako, might look like uh, he might look like Brian Toto and, and we go and yep. get him in round three and that's fine. We can get Brian that, we can cash that. I, got, I reckon Brian Toto could probably kick as well. Um, <laughs> but, uh, mate, if, you, if he looks good, you, you grab him in round three. He's one of those guys you don't oh. start with. There's too much risk. There's way too much uncertainty around this squad to go and say, yep, I'm going to start with a Dolphin knowing that they're going to do well. 